Well, the latest forecast from the government's budget watchdog, the OBR, points to a stronger recovery from the COVID crisis than previously predicted. But the longer-term outlook isn't so strong. For a closer look at today's figures, here's our economics correspondent, Helia Ebrahimi. As Gary was saying, this is a huge budget with two very different halves. In the first two years, it's spend, spend, spend. But then it switches to an aggressive series of tax hikes and spending cuts. First, let's look at the economy. In almost every year of the forecast, the outlook today was worse. All except next year, when the Chancellor's fiscal firepower helps drive growth at the fastest pace since records began in 1949. Now, some economists have talked about a return to the roaring 20s. But take a look at later in the forecast, as growth returns to more of an anemic pace, as the government switches from giving money away to taking money. Now, let's talk about some of those big borrowing numbers, because this year, the deficit will be £355 billion. And next year, we learn today, will also be a massive borrowing year, hitting £234 billion. Then you have this handbrake turn when borrowing is reduced as spending cuts and tax hikes are introduced. But in every single year, headline debt tops 100% of GDP, something that would have left Osborne and co choking on their cornflakes. Now, an hour ago, Rishi Sunak defended his decision to borrow so much, saying no other chancellor had to deal with a global pandemic. But today's extension of support measures to companies and to people added an extra £44 billion to costs. He also unveiled an extraordinary tax rebate to businesses that'll see Treasury give back £1.30 for every £1 that companies invest. Now, this super deduction adds £22.5 billion over the next five years, but it all changes after 2022, when corporate tax jumps to 25% and personal tax thresholds are frozen. Together, these two will raise 25 billion a year by 2025. Now, earlier I asked the Chancellor if COVID spending could be even higher than forecast. You've made a lot today about wanting to be honest with people. Is it your honest judgment today that the pandemic will cost nothing from next year? Now, obviously, at this moment, we don't know exactly uh, the, the future path of what's going to happen. But what we do know is that this year, there's an enormous amount of call for extra funding for coronavirus. So I don't have a crystal ball about, about next year, but we are thinking about the next 12 months and what's required. This is all the more important because of how much more risky interest rates have become. Over the last three years, rates have been getting lower and lower, reaching almost zero and making the government's borrowing costs cheaper. But this could all change as global rates are on the turn. If we look closer at gilts, that's the government bonds used to borrow. In the last few weeks alone, the interest bill has jumped by £6.3 billion. This all means the knife edge that the Chancellor's spending plans are balanced on could become even more precarious in years to come.